prepare for a crossover episode where Kitchen Nightmares meets Hoarders. Well, not really, but given how much junk the owner keeps around, this episode could pass for one. During the sixth season of Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon Ramsay visited the Old Neighborhood Restaurant in Arvada, Colorado. Randy and Alexa, a married couple, own the restaurant, which they bought 25 years ago. The business initially showed potential, but it has suffered a steady slide over the prior 13 years. In recent months, the situation has worsened, with an even more substantial decline. There are clearly visible signs of wear and tear throughout the building. The wallpaper is crumbling, and the furniture is falling apart. But what's even worse is that the interior of the restaurant is littered with a bunch of Randy's knickknacks lying around. But I don't really think that I'm a hoarder. It's just hard for me to throw things away. Randy won't admit he has a hoarding problem. Randy's hoarding. Well, he's got some serious decor issues. It's the food that counts, though, right? Unfortunately, Alexa's menu contains everything from teriyaki steak, beef wontons, to duck schnitzel. I don't think there is a menu in the country that is even close to ours. On the other hand, Alexa won't admit it is her food that is one of the problems with the restaurant. With $320,000 of debt, the restaurant is facing serious financial challenges, and hence is seeking help from Gordon Ramsay to avoid closure. Will this couple listen to Chef Ramsay's advice? As Gordon enters the reception area, he's startled by an unusual sight. A mannequin, clad in leopard print, a baseball cap, and leather gloves, stands before him. Gordon can't help but raise an eyebrow at the unusual display. He wonders if this is a desperate attempt to attract customers, or a poor attempt at decoration. He takes a deep breath before speaking with the owners about what needs to be done if the establishment is going to survive. While chatting with Randy, Gordon discovers that the mannequin's name is Fiona, and her owner, Alexa, has a reputation for her frequent outfit changes. After that, Gordon meets Alexa, who says she has a connection to Fiona. Getting down to the real business, Chef Ramsay asks them about how long they've had the place. They both started as servers at the restaurant. Their journey took a dramatic turn in 1988, when they became the establishment's proud owners. When asked what the problem is at the old neighborhood, Alexa assures Ramsay it can't be the food, because how could they stay in business for 33 years if the food wasn't good? Gordon gives her the benefit of the doubt, but also tells him he needs to try the food out firsthand to see for himself. At the table, he's greeted by his waitress, Kristen, before Gordon can ask Kristen about all the junky decor, he notices a stench lingering in the air. Curious, he inquires about it, to which Kristen explains that it originates from the upholstery of the booth chairs. Gordon, after a quick investigation, confirms her statement. They stink. But what weirds out Gordon even more are the wheels on the bottom of the chairs. <laughs> All joking aside, Gordon takes a seat and looks over the rather extensive menu with everything from French to Italian to New Orleans cuisine. But before he can even order, he's attacked by a fly that won't stop buzzing around him. After a bit of an attempt, he's able to navigate his way through the available options and orders a few dishes. As he patiently waits for his meal, he's greeted at the table by the couple's son Wiley, who has worked at the restaurant for 10 years. Wiley tells Chef Ramsay the main issue lies in the decor, Surprisingly, he is prohibited from removing or even touching any of Randy's stuff that's cluttered the restaurant for a staggering three decades. In the kitchen, Alexa cooks Gordon's food with confidence. My dishes are excellent, and if Chef Ramsay doesn't like any of my cooking, it will piss me off. Oh. Gordon's first dish, the New Orleans shrimp, is visibly smothered in a barbecue cream sauce. The dish is so bad that even the fly doesn't want it. Gordon says he wouldn't even feed it to Fiona, the mannequin. Next up is the salmon, and it's worth mentioning that they have a fondness for heavy cream, generously slathering it over a lot of the menu items. The second dish disappoints as the salmon is rather dry, leading Gordon to suspect that it may have been frozen. In the kitchen, Kristen tells Alexa what Chef Ramsay's opinion of her food is. Alexa takes offense to his objection about her generous use of cream sauce. And yeah, well, everything he ordered has cream, but... I know. Wow, and, I would think people um, would know what they're ordering before they did it. As he waits for his last dish to arrive, Gordon notices that the wallpaper is peeling off the walls. 
When Gordon inquires with Randy about the lack of wallpaper replacement, all he gets from Randy is more runaround answers. Finally, the last dish, the Yucatan sea scallops, arrive. The dish lacks flavor, and upon further investigation, Chef Ramsay finds out gave it the Yucatan name simply because it is a bit of spice in it. This makes Ramsay do a double face palm. Following his underwhelming dining experience in a musky, bug-filled dining room, Gordon heads to the kitchen to have a post-meal chat with the staff. Alexa adamantly asserts that the cuisine is exceptional, but admits she didn't even taste the food she made for Chef Ramsay before serving it to him. As Gordon returns later for the evening service, he diligently inspects the dining area. To his surprise, he discovers some old candy, dirt, and even a comb lurking in the depths of the couch cushions. Much not to his surprise, Randy takes a comb and puts it into his pocket, just like the hoarder he is. As Gordon lifts the cushions on the booths, he discovers a less than pleasant sight, rat droppings and old shoes scattered underneath. As he enters the kitchen, he notices a bunch of old, faulty equipment, as everything in the place is 33 years old. To top it off, he notes a bizarre kitchen organization feature, meat thermometers neatly tucked away in a hole in the wall. If all of that wasn't bad enough, Chef Ramsay sees Alexa using a spray can to coat all the dishes in a thick layer of non-stick coating directly on the meat before chucking them on the grill. It continues to get worse for the old neighborhood as Ramsay's tour of the place continues. He discovers another storage room filled with even more of Randy's crap stored away. Next, we discover a dead mouse next to the cleaning equipment. Alexa acknowledges that Randy has a hoarding problem. Ramsay takes it a step further and tells her she is enabling him as a hoarder. Back in the dining area, customers are returning their food for a variety of reasons. And we haven't even got into Ramsay's inspection of the walk-in yet. Once he gets inside the refrigeration unit, it is bad. Really bad. Rotten meat, old food, lots of dirt and grime with numerous reports of cross-contamination amongst the items stored inside. A chocolate dessert rests atop the raw meat, and meat juices saturate the surrounding area. According to Alexa, they cleaned it just a week prior. Ramsey says it's one of the worst refrigeration units he's ever seen. This is the final straw for Gordon. He orders the immediate closure of the kitchen. Gordon insists that the customers should not consume any of the food, instructing the servers to tell the guests that unfortunately, they won't be getting their dinner that evening. Alexa is feeling a sense of disappointment as she takes pride in her work. However, her feeling of pride are overshadowed by the shocking revelations in her kitchen made by Gordon. Randy even insists that they spent a solid five days cleaning before Gordon's arrival, saying he had to throw out his clothes. Shit! What the fuck? You just need to stop. Clearly, Gordon remains skeptical about their honesty and commitment to making the changes necessary. To prove to Chef Ramsay that they mean business, they spend the entire night deep cleaning the place. The following day, Gordon is satisfied with the cleaning progress. While the place might be clean, the junk is still there. Therefore, the next thing Randy needs to do is say goodbye to all of his clutter. Randy at first doesn't want to part ways with his belongings, in particular a vintage canister of Dr. Wiley's scalp treatment, whom he named his eldest son after. Yet, he eventually caves and agrees to toss it all out. To make sure he really means it though, Ramsay has arranged for a trash compactor to crush everything once and for all. Ramsay even orders Randy to pull the lever to activate the junk compactor, disposing of all the discarded items, with Fiona being the final victim. In the end, everyone, even Randy, is relieved to have that weight off their shoulders. Gordon continues by showcasing the completely renovated kitchen, which now boasts $60,000 worth of cutting-edge equipment. In terms of the new equipment, Ramsey gave them a six-ring gas burner, two full-size ovens, and even a cool new high-efficiency pressure fryer. Outside the restaurant, they've replaced the old signage with a modern one to enhance the visibility for customers driving past. And we haven't even got into the inside of the restaurant yet. In the dining room, the booth chairs have undergone a makeover with a new stain-resistant fabric in a beautiful rich blue color. The chairs with the wheels on the bottom have been swapped for more traditional seating. The menu has been significantly reduced from 92 items to just 20. The staff is quite pleased with the new dishes. 
As the relaunch night gets underway, the staff is highly motivated and efficiently collaborating. In the kitchen, though, Alexa is still hesitant to delegate tasks. Yet, after receiving a motivational speech from Gordon, she gains confidence and starts taking charge in her role. The relaunch proved to be a resounding success, leaving customers thoroughly satisfied with the new menu items. Not only are the customers pleased, but Alexa and Randy are also overjoyed with the outcome. A local food blogger, known as Keeping It Real in Denver, brought up Ramsey's 2013 visit to the Mile High City. She also mentioned that he was filming two additional episodes of Kitchen Nightmares during his trip to Colorado that summer for the sixth season of the show that was being produced. The first was his trip to Denver for pizza at Pantalones. He headed to the old neighborhood next, then finished his Colorado trip at Manja Manja, which was situated in Woodland Park. All three episodes became instant hits and are well known and liked within the series as a whole. Alexa did an interview with the mayor of Arvada not long after the filming of the episode. From a kitchen nightmare to a diner's delight, this place has never looked better. Well, they came around with little postcards saying Gordon Ramsay was coming and uh, all you had to do was nominate, anybody could. So one of my cooks got on the phone and nominated. Three months, it was all, all here and Chef Ramsay was here. As <laughs> soon well, as my cook uh, nominated us, it was less than 24 hours of phone calls and four weeks later they were in here shooting from LA and another three, two months they were shooting from New York and it was a whirlwind to say the very least. And this show didn't destroy the marriage? You know what, if you could stay married for 30 years in the restaurant business working together, um, even Gordon Ramsay's not going to affect that. So, yeah, we had, uh, we had quite an experience, but I sort of fed him to the wolf. I think he'd probably like to think he taught me how to cook. He certainly gave me some good pointers. The most exciting part about the whole thing was the kitchen equipment. So I got about $65,000 in kitchen equipment, which every morning it's so much fun to flip the pressure fryer on. <laughs> that was one of the great things that he got us, which was uh, a really neat thing from Wisconsin. So it pressure fries pork chops and chicken. and um, They enjoy being able to come back now and get their old favorites, which are back on the menu, being the prime rib and things that I've been doing for 30 years. Um, but it's really interesting and it's nice for them to be able to try the new things that Ramsey's brought in. Um, some fun things, duck confit and beet salad and some other really nice, different, you know, modern-ish dishes. Sure. Are you glad you did it? Very glad. Why would you not do it? Life's full of opportunities, and if you don't take them, you don't know what's on the other side of them. An upgraded interior, a modern menu, and a renewed spirit. And although they don't serve them here at the Old Neighborhood Restaurant, that's a wrap. This Yelper, who was at the relaunch night, praised Ramsey's new dishes, such as the duck confit and the beet salad. Although reviews following the airing of the episode were generally positive, some reviewers pointed out that a great deal of the restaurant interior, beyond the part shown on the episode, still needed a renovation. This reviewer pointed out how bad the men's bathrooms looked in particular. The reviewer who took this photo said the mac and cheese was bland, the kale tasted burnt, the chicken had a very hard crust that defied chewing, as they put it. One Yelper said clearly they didn't take anything Ramsey said to heart. Even though reviews did go up after Kitchen Nightmares, their overall rating was only 3.1 on Yelp. Not long after, the old neighborhood announced this on their Facebook page. It's official. After 36 years of business, we have sold the restaurant and will be closing our doors on Sunday, May 1st, 2016. We want to thank everyone for your continued support and love over the years. Although it will be a big change in our lives, we are excited to see what the future holds. The place was listed for sale with a price of $775,000, mentioning that it was recently filmed for a Fox TV reality restaurant show hosted by Gordon Ramsay to air in 2014. Following that, the space was occupied by a new restaurant called The Butchery. It's a steakhouse that remodeled most of the interior after taking over the space. You can see the difference on the outside of the entrance compared to when Chef Ramsay visited the old neighborhood. Overall, it has pretty good reviews online, with a 4.1 rating on Yelp and continues to operate to this day. As for what happened to the family, Alexa announced that Wiley had a son and that her and Randy were proud to be grandparents. It turns out Wiley is even a skilled golfer, with his mother proudly announcing that he passed his PAT test to get his professional golf association card. This episode has garnered a lot of attention online for a variety of reasons. The meat thermometer they stuffed in the wall's hole has certainly raised some eyebrows. 
Others have noted that there is an eerie physical resemblance between Alexa and Donald Trump, saying her hair and skin looks very similar to the former president's. What do you guys think? Whereas with Randy, other than his hoarding, viewers love the Joker card that Chef Ramsay handed to him after fishing it out from under the couch pillows. There you go, there's your card. The Joker, how fitting is that? On Facebook, Alexa says that she is still working in the restaurant business, currently at Briar Rose Chop House and Saloon in Breckenridge, Colorado. Sadly, I don't have an update on what happened to Ramsey's waitress, Kristen. She has become a bit of a fan favorite amongst fans of the series, with many praising her honesty with Chef Ramsey, which made her an almost complete counterpoint to the owner's defensive attitude. With another commenter in particular asking, why do the shittiest places always have the cutest waitresses? It is indeed a bit of a mystery, but it seems like it could be one of the Kitchen Nightmares cliches. Additionally, I don't have any update on Randy's professional endeavors post the old neighborhood. According to Alexa's Facebook, they are still married. Furthermore, next year will be their 40th wedding anniversary. It's sad their restaurant didn't work out in the long run, but hey, it's a tough business to be in. I'm glad that overall, they look like they're doing well now though.